So, okay, go back to you and her. So how you last we heard in your story, you got kicked out. You're oh, kind of yeah. wandering around. You're hoping that they'll let you back in. At some point, you guys become an item. So how t- take us now. How do so you get I live with my uncle and then my grandparents took me in. I mean, I'm just I'm being an absolute like doofish slash loaf. I'm not like their grandparents like just give their heart and soul and even give me money. I mean, they're just so kind to me. And I'm just telling them all this weird stuff that I'm thinking and feeling about aliens and all sorts of stuff. And they're just super patient and uh, super loving. Like anyways. And so I end up going to see her and we go out on a date and see who teal. You go on a date with teal. Yeah. After you've been kicked out of the house. Yeah. Okay. And we sleep in the back of her car that she had bought and sleep together and it was cuddle or actual no have sex sorry okay so that was your first time to have sex with her was she married at the time yes she she was married at the time okay and what how did you make sense of that you had been kicked out you knew she was married she still wanted to be with me so she was in contact with me through like messenger like did she say why she wanted to be have you in her life uh we were always meant to be together like where i'm the chosen one or all this stuff like just huge amounts of love bombing and amazing things that like I could never have even imagined. Like I was just so flattering uh, you, oh, yeah, telling just, you it was, was meant to be the greatest person ever. Have, we've been together soulmate. for lifetimes, soulmate, true love. So a belief that you had been together in previous lifetimes. Is that what you just said? I think so. I could be, I could be overstepping there. I'm not sure. I'm over, but, but I'm like something. Yeah. I mean, mystical. like mystical. Yeah. Or, or, or like in the highest dimension. So supposedly like everything exists on all these different dimensions. So you're here in the third dimension, but my reptilian alien was in this fourth dimension outside of time. And she lived on the sixth dimension and there's like tense dimensions and all these. So cool. All this like imaginary world. If you got a, like a hyperactive mind with like mine, like these things you really eat up. You know, like I'm into technology and that's like the sign of like being a reptilian if you like technology. So apparently that's what. You know. And and like anybody who's kind of listening to this now who's not a believer is like, this sounds crazy. Oh, yeah. yeah. And you're, you're, you're a computer programmer. So you, it's at some level, highly intelligent, highly capable. What kept you at the time <laughs> of saying this is crazy sauce, which is what all the people watching now are thinking. But at the time you're an intelligent human. But but instead of saying this is crazy sauce, you're like, whoa, this is all true. So and, and by the way, I, I watched Waco and like one of his followers was a Harvard law grad. Like intelligent people follow cults, Scientology, yeah. like Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormonism, if if you know, in this to the extent that it's unhealthy, it's not a bunch of dumb people. So how do super intelligent people get looped into what sounds like crazy sauce? Well, it's, Did you ever like think, what if she's lying or could this be false or? No, because I, I'm in so much pain and I'm holding like, I'm feeling so bad. And she has the answers that like, I'm holding like myself hostage to all this. Like I'm forcing myself like this is the way. Cause you're like, desperate. I'm desperate. For yeah. what? You're desperate for? Healing, for happiness, for health. For and she's put herself as your, yeah. your answer Yeah. And so like. That. Like, and this is it. Like, this is what I've been waiting for my whole life. Like, this is, this is the big deal. So I'm going to like do whatever she says and, and feel it and go there. And I, and I just, I don't know if it's just the type of person I am, but I'm like so susceptible to just being able to create, like, I'm very placebo based. Like if you told me this water would give me superpowers or something, I drank it. I'm, probably would believe to some degree that now I am stronger, healthier, whatever. And I've definitely fallen for a lot of multi-levels and things like that. Um, I don't know if I'm now I'm much more, you know, oh, wow, that sounds like a cult. And people get offended. I'm like, sounds, I'm just calling like it is. Don't want to be in another one. Like, I don't want to fall. But you were vulnerable and thus highly susceptible. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So she's, you have this date, you have sex, she's married still. She's telling you you're a reptile and that you're meant to be. How did it progress? So then she, I think she just lies to her spouse or whatever. But then she says like, it's over and I'm meant to be. And then I get to come back and live with her. And, uh, and so you move back in. Yeah. I move back what in. What about her husband? He moves into another room. He moves out, but he with stays the bed, in the but, house. Yeah. 
So how does a guy? So this is another thing. Like I'm thinking about when Joseph Smith was like the polyandry stuff, where he's marrying other men's wives, and somehow they're cool with it. Like how could a guy become cool with some other guy sleeping in the same bed with his wife? How does that happen? I think they're like getting separated. Yeah, they're going to get divorced. So, so they're on their way out, and no, he had no place to live, or it was his yeah, house. Yeah, and they whatever. still, she still loved him and wanted to be there. And I think she kept putting on me a lot, like, oh, you want to be a polygamist, like, later on. And I think she really wanted just to be okay with her sleeping with all the guys. And i just tell her, yeah, do it. I mean, all those guys would gladly, you know, quit trying to, like, pretend you don't want to do it and just do it already. <laughs> At least they, we, you wouldn't be doing it secret, Till. I mean, come on. <laughs> so it was a loose sexual culture. Yeah, I mean, but it was just kind of like, oh, I'm only... But, like, I was watching her like a hawk. So she'd be okay because supposedly, like, she was... So she was, like, friends with this rich Chinese guy that came over or something like that. And he came over to the house and they were playing games. They were playing games and... um he put his hand on her leg and like molested her when nobody was looking supposedly while I was in the other room or something. And she said to like, leave him alone or something like for a minute or something or I had to work. And eventually she left and like told me that that happened and that she'd been abused. And I was just like freaking out. Like I didn't help protect her. I didn't know what was going on. Like, how could you let this guy into the house? And just to be clear, sexual abuse happens. And for all, for all we know, she could have been touched inappropriately. Maybe she probably was. Like, I don't want to get the sense that this program is about no, not discarding. believing victims. No, it was of sexual sad. Abuse. I was so Cause, angry. Cause we we do believe victims of sexual abuse, yeah. and we believe sexual abuse is rampant and it's awful. Yeah. Uh, so I don't want to give that impression. But anyway, she told you that a guy yeah, and uh, so I was her in enraged, and I called him and I said, "What the hell did you do?" I was like yelling at him and everything. And did he probably give her money? I think she had before. Okay. I don't know what they were, what the situation but he was. He was a rich now. guy. Yeah, supposedly. Okay. That's what, I don't, I don't know. Okay. So she tells you about this. And, uh. You get mad? Yeah. And I can't remember what he says or doesn't say, but I think he just defends himself and hangs up or something. But anyway, so she's like traumatized and I'm definitely like a very animated explosive person during this time like i'm very like okay we got to do this too and like okay we got to do it like i'm forcing myself to do whatever i can to help make everything better like working around the house and working trying to take care of teal making sure there's always food and water because she would like complain about a lot of things like oh nobody cares about me enough to get me this treat or nobody cares about me enough to buy me this or nobody cares about me enough to make a lot of money for me or get rich. And I'm like, I'm going to get rich. And so it was my goal to get rich before we got married because I wanted so badly to get her everything she wanted, like a giant castle and all these things. And every night she would supposedly have dreams and she'd wake up and tell me about them all. And, uh, um, yeah. And she said like, you know, if I said I didn't want to do or like was against something, she's like, you know, in your dreams, you'd always say I would, I will find a way. And then later when I left the cult, like I got that tattooed on my arm, like I was going to find a way to like get back to help her. Like my whole goal was to get rich, to go and like save her. Even after you left. Yeah. Like save her from what? Like, I don't even know what to save her from. She had a wonderful life. Like it was just like so dramatic and so, there's so much pain. Like, Oh my gosh, we have to do this. Like, don't you care enough about me? Are you, you like, I need you to be all in Blake. I need you to be all in. Are you willing to do whatever it takes? We need to be able to die for this cause. And he's like, I know till I know. And like, she would uh, say that to yeah. people. We need to be willing to die for the cause. Yeah. We, this is bigger than ourselves. This is bigger than any of us. And, um, yeah. Talk about the tattoos you have in your arms. You said that, um, she had you get some tattoos or that some of the tattoos you have were, were tied to well, your teachings or, or yeah, whatever yeah. you think it's appropriate. Yeah. So first the, uh, she said my name didn't fit me and I needed to pick a new name. So which it's, is a sign of a cult. If you're getting a new name, you're probably in a cult. That's, so <laughs> it was Fallon. <laughs> Fallon was the new name. And she gave me like a list that how, she how do you spell it? F A L L O N. Okay. 
And I was in this. So when I'm in this, like my mindset is all in this. And I think it's something that some people don't understand is that you, you eat, drink and, you know, breathe this stuff. And so like, it's real. She's the one like, this is 100%. I'm an alien. Like I'm willing to do whatever. Like there are reptilians out to get us. Like I'm a good reptilian somehow. Cause I've left the, the herd, but like, this is bad. Like we have to do whatever it takes. And so like, I would be saying things on videos. I'm sure I've said a lot of things and message people things that make it sound like this is it. And so I apologize to everyone I've ever said things that weren't true, but at the time they felt true because they felt true because I forced them to be true for me because I wanted so bad to be accepted by the group that my mind kind of just warped and did mental gymnastics over things that were obviously false, fake, and impossible. And I feel that that's something I did in Mormonism too, is that like, like even if I didn't receive an answer, I would make it happen. Like I'd make a feeling or do whatever it took because I wanted so badly to be one of the people that knew something that I didn't. And it felt so good to profess that knowledge and to feel that way. Um, anyways, so yeah. I'm in it. We're doing it. So what's going on? So we go out to these events where she goes out and has a whole bunch of people there and they're all, it's all trauma and drama. Like, oh my gosh, like every little thing, like someone says something and she can get set off and be in her room and just like freaking out or, and just like, we have to do something like, like we have to do something about that person. We've got to be able to control them. We've got to be able to get them out of here. We've so got kind to of the to... paranoia. Oh, and super. you see a lot of that with Jim Jones, with, with David Koresh and even with Joseph Smith as things started really unraveling, just extreme paranoia. Yeah. I think yeah. seeing she said a lot was just like, that's not okay. That's not okay. Like if they're letting this happen, that's not okay. And it's like ice cream or some, I don't know. I don't, I don't even Did, know. Were there people who had left that were kind of starting to oppose her people who had been part of her movement and then left? Was there any of that? So yeah, sometimes like they had to protect like people and groups and things. But, um, I think I was the main one that they you were the first main threat. I think I'm trying to think of anyone else. They said, Oh, but like she would lie about all sorts of things. And if you ask her, so she supposedly can see the future, right? She can fully psychic and everything. So you would ask her like, okay, well, why don't you just give, we even said that, well, if you can do everything, why don't you just give us the winning lottery numbers? And it's just like, it doesn't work like that. And it's like, oh, okay, so how does it work? And it's like, well, and then I'm like, she'd say something would happen. And then it's always your fault. Like, Oh, well, why do you need that? Or everything that you want or ask, it's it's your fault for asking it or you're asking it wrong or you weren't a match for it. And I feel like that happens with religion sometimes. Like if God doesn't answer your prayers, it's your fault. And abusive relationships, you know, if your husband's mad or your you know, the abusive partner's mad at you, it's your fault. What, what have I done wrong? What did I do wrong? And it's the same mentality with the spirituality. Like you're not doing it right. If you're not having an amazing life, you're just not doing it right. It could just be that none of this stuff is for you and you don't like any of it, but you can't think that way because you're thinking so badly that you want to be better or fix yourself or be a part of something or have friends or love or whatever it is that you're not really thinking that maybe this just isn't for you because you're so, I feel like people are so far removed. I don't know if it's trauma or whatever that happens in their life, head trauma or what, but they can get kind of split where they're just like so far removed from themselves, so. And that's, again, super important marker of, of, a, of, a, of a cult, I'll just say it. So for example, like, well, with patriarchal blessings, if it comes true, well, then then the, the patriarch was inspired and the church is true. If it doesn't come true, what? You Your weren't fault. worthy. Yeah, you weren't worthy. You made a mistake. Exactly. When Joseph Smith did Zion's camp, he basically marched all these saints from, I think, Kirtland to Missouri to, def you know, to attack the Missourians or to defend the Mormons who were being attacked. And all his prophecies about what was going to happen in Zion's camp didn't come true. So the way he got out of that was to blame the Mormons, his followers, for Probably. not being righteous enough. And yeah. that's why Zion's camp failed. Genius. And even in the same thing <laughs> with uh, Jehovah's Witness movement, when they were prophesying certain times when the world would end and then the world didn't end, it was always put back on the on the members. And that's the actually weird way that that prophecies cannot come true, but followers become more committed. Yeah, because they this shame and guilt is the, is they the tool that's used to make them double down in their commitment yeah. to the cult leader in the organization. Exactly. And the David Koresh stuff in Waco was all part of that. So I mean, these are all markers of of a cult, basically. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs>
Okay. So. So lots of drama. Someone asked if there were a lot of, so this whole, the, the friend that I have that, that made me aware of Teal Swan basically experienced some really serious, with the recovered memory, some false accusations. Let's just say they were having a hard time in their life and they got mixed up with Teal and then Teal started doing this recovered memory, false exactly. memory stuff where a family member of this friend ended up getting accused of sexual abuse when there was no evidence mm. and no memory mm. other than this Barbara Snow-like recovered memory stuff that ended up really threatening real relationships oh, with yeah. false accusations. Oh, yeah. Did you see that? I did in, that. So What do you mean? So what she said is like, okay, I'm going to teach you how to uncover your press memories. Lie down and let your brain show you whatever you Whatever your brain you. comes up with. Yeah, and so you make up these fanciful, horrific tales of all sorts of disgusting, disturbing things, and you do it for hours and hours, and you build upon this narrative that gets bigger and longer. Why did she feel like you needed to do this? Because I had to un like learn who I really was. But really, she was all about monitoring, controlling what I said and who I said it to, and and. Uh, like if I was on the phone with someone, I was on speaker and she, everyone was listening in and her and she'd just be like, see, like he is evil or whatever, you know, just like all sorts of stuff. And um, she wanted me to cut out my family, but in like a backhanded way of like, you know, they're not good for you. And, and she was all about like, you love your daughter more than me and all sorts of stuff. And I hadn't seen my daughter in months and I was feeling terrible about it. And like, man, I missed out a lot of, on growing up um, with my daughter because of, I think mental illness and thinking I was a monster and trying to stay away until I was better. But really like once I moved here and I stayed here and I forced myself to stay here, our relationship improved dramatically and my life improved. And we'll get to that. But, but, but going back to the teaching you about repressed memories, recovered memories, oh, yeah. she had you convinced that there was, you had to figure out who you were. And so she's lying you down, having yeah. your, priming you to have imaginative sort of uh, thoughts around sex and childhood. So, and then in your, and so you're spending hours constructing a new narrative uh -huh. just as a, as a way a fiction writer would create mm -hmm. fiction. But because of the setting, you're generating false memories. I, mean, I don't mean to be, yeah, yeah, is, that, is that what you're yeah, saying? Exactly. And so I, I mean, I, have these like visualizations of driving in a van with my dad, a white van that I've never seen before. And we go pick up like children or little people and, and you know, whoever and chop them up and kill them. And, like, and you, you believe that you had done that. So again, like I was all in it, but at the part of me, like I wouldn't dare say that to the cops because I part of me didn't think it was actually real. I feel like because when I got to the psych ward, I actually committed myself, and then I like kind of ran a game where I didn't tell them everything because I was trying to get out of there because it was so horrible. So I just acted like I was healthy and fine. And then when my stepdad actually came, I said like, "Get me out of here! Like I want to get out of here." And their doctors were like, "Why? You seem so fine." And I was like, "Yeah, because if I would have told you anything else, you wouldn't have let me. I need to get back to my job and all sorts of stuff." Psych ward did not help me. It was really scary, and I'm really glad. I guess in that way, it did help me, like get some more grounding. Like, but I mean, I spent all my time in there just looking at pictures of teal swan paintings, trying to raise my vibration. Did so, they let you bring those paintings in? No, I like got access to a computer once I moved up in a level, and I was just. Looking at them, I said brainwashes. And and going back to the kind of implanted or recovered or false yeah. memories. So you you said on a, and, and this is this is totally what the Lawrence Wright book on remembering Satan's about because you've got a policeman admitting that he that he sexually abused his own kids using horrific satanic rituals when he had no memory of it, but he but he never really could figure out whether he had done it or not. There was a part of him that believed it, but a part of him that didn't. But in the end, he confessed to stuff that he didn't do. Mm -hmm. And and you're saying you were in that betwixt thinking it was real and not. Yeah. So all these things you had so, created. In I your mean, mind. one of the first tattoos I got was this, and it says, Is it true? So I was sitting there and she would constantly try to get me to be more authentic. And she would say that, like, oh, you're you're not being authentic. Everything you're saying is a lie. You have to say your truth. And I basically, I just would get to the point where I try to say whatever she wanted me to say. And that was what it's about. And if I ever did something she didn't like, she's like, okay, you're being Jared again. I need you to be Fallon. 
you know, if I was like, oh, I really am hungry or whatever, whatever complaint or need or anything I wanted, it was always like, eh. And, but I mean, it wasn't a hundred percent that there is, there was definitely moments of tenderness and kindness mixed in with there's all gotta the, be. That's yeah. how it's got, it's the only way it works. Yeah. Is if there's positive reinforcement. Yeah. There's yeah. definitely goodness that came with it, with it. But I just like know now that generally a relationship isn't like 70% drama and drama and 30% happiness. It should be like way different. 95, five. Yeah, exactly. 95, five. <laughs> yeah. Classic. Okay. So again, this, this was going back to the question of, did you see her practicing the recovered memory, false sexual allegations kind of thing? And you're saying you lived it, you experienced yeah. it. Yeah. And I, she did it with everyone, everyone kind of like, okay, it's your turn to get, get your, oh yeah. I found out my false memories too. It's kind of like a badge of honor. Like everyone's coming forth with creating their false memories. So and, sitting with her and doing that was almost a ritual. Yeah. And it was like, everyone's gets a turn and everyone's going to find out that they were really abused and nobody knew about it. So everyone was sexually abused ritually and no one knew about it. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't, maybe there was a couple of people who didn't get into it, but, but it, it just seemed like it, it was, was like, thing. yeah. Okay. Okay. And, uh, and so, yeah, her stories, every time we did Shadow House, just got longer and crazier and more. Shadow House, that's what? where we'd sit around a table and live stream everyone talking and trying to work through beliefs using the, I don't know, sure if it's, I don't know which one, but it's it was like. called Shadow House. Yeah. So it's her and her friends sitting around a table, live streaming, mm -hmm. processing of life and experiences. Yeah. And you were part of that. Yeah. And why do people weird. watch it? Uh, because they're. They're, they're reaching out. They want to get an answer to how to become better. They want to be near till they think she has the answer. She's claimed to know stuff. Are they and calling they, in? And uh, No, it's like live streams. So they're chatting and they're watching it. So she's like answering questions. and Other times she, when she do events, she would do that. She'd answer questions for people and okay. spin off stuff, you know, be able to just make up stuff. It's a real good talent of hers. And so. So her talent is what? What are the, this bullshitting. talent? What do you mean? Just make up stuff. So you ask me a question. I can do it right now. Anyone can do it. So, so what would be a common question that she, that someone would ask her? Um, I feel really lost in my life right now or something like that. Okay. I don't know. Or and like, then she'd say what? Or like. And what would be the process? That's going on right now across all dimensions. It's very in tune of you to notice that and to feel that within you. It's because your heart chakra is needs to be opened up. You need to embrace this and do this or buy this painting. I don't know. Just make up. You just, you can go. Keep going. Keep going. You need to. You need to embrace your inner child. You need to go back as a child and feel what it was like to feel that love and warmth and to embrace that child and to heal from those traumas. It may take your whole life, but it's a valiant and courageous, you know, I don't know. I just, and then the product pitch would come in. How? I don't, I don't know if she would always product pitch. I'm not sure, but she, I mean, like she had a painting for everything. So you could go pick one from the site and buy one. And she would say, well, how would she talk about the paintings? I have paintings what, what for was, this or that. That'll help raise your vibration and like okay. it, fix heal this, like, Oh, the painting of this or that. But, we'll do what? Uh, anything. So, I mean, pick a problem that you have. She can draw something for it. Moving forward in life, you're healing from a death or AIDS or, I mean, becoming rich, um, finding the love of your life. If you buy the right painting, yeah. like use the right essential oil, yeah. like unplug the right chakra, yeah. that, you know. Everything will go right. Okay. And so she says all this, and then as soon as I pause in the live stream, she's like, Blake, come here and do this. Da, da, da. What the hell is going on here? Where's Winter? Have you watched him? Are you playing with it? You know, like, and then, but sometimes it wasn't that bad, but sometimes it was, but it's just like. So was, she was a jerk off screen. Or oh, yeah. She would look, Please, she would bitch. appear guru-ish and enlightened yeah. when the camera was on. And, but then behind the scenes, it was what? Yeah, a nightmare. And her defense is everyone's got a shadow side. Even like Tony Robbins and all these famous people have a shadow side. And I'm like, yeah, maybe the bigger you fight to become famous, maybe the bigger asshole you are. I don't know. But I just There's this moment in the David Koresh Waco video series on uh, Netflix where one of the followers says, I hate that I believe in this guy. He's one of the biggest jerks in the world. But he's God's servant on the earth. And so even though he's a huge jerk, I have to follow him because he's God's servant. So the, it's kind of that. It's this idea that people around them know that they're jerks. But because they're bought in, 
that they're willing to tolerate it. Are you saying that it was like that? Yeah, and supposedly, this is what I was told a lot, is that it was all worse because I was there. So I was really- You were the making, reason. Yeah, I was really making a really horrible. But then I talked to her ex- husband that has been with her, like she had like two husbands or something after me and, or boyfriends, I don't know. But, um, and one of them was like, it was pretty bad, but it was good. And so I think it, I think I definitely was sabotaging it, making it worse than anyone else. I'm sure it was one of the worst periods of her life or something. And sorry. It wasn't. Someone's asking if she ever claimed to be a therapist. And I'm going to add to that. How did she talk about going to a psychologist or a psychiatrist or, or, or medications, that, that sort of thing. She has, supposedly she tried a bunch and they didn't help her or something. And, but she, um, she did she did energy work. There was a place like on 900 South, like some uh, twisted spiral or something. I forget the name of it. Some vortex place. But they, she would bring people in. They'd pay money and they'd just talk. And supposedly she said she was like molested there tons of times and all sorts of stuff. And I'm just like why do you let them do this or whatever? I didn't understand it. And I don't know. Yeah. It's sad. Whatever happened. But, but did she claim to be a therapist? No, I don't think she claimed to. I think she'd get sued if she did. Okay. So okay. she would skirt around that. Okay. Just energy healing or whatever. Energy healing was how she yeah. called it. Yeah. Okay. So how, so you're, you're living with her now. You're sleeping in the same bed. You're kind of boyfriend, girlfriend. That was about a five, you said a five month, period where you were her, yeah. you were her exclusive, I mean, I don't know, exclusive, but you were her partner yeah. and you were really building this thing. Yeah. Anything else you want to talk about what you did together during those five months? Yeah. So she'd make up like a ritual where you'd write something and burn it down and like burn it in like a ring and like had like ceremonies or stuff to make, you know, we go on walks and runs. I mean, make food and eat together. And I don't know. It was just, was, was it, were there parts of it that were beautiful being yeah. her partner? Oh, yeah, what was for beautiful? sure. What was beautiful? Tenderness, about it? love, uh, great sex. I mean, like, um, you know, snuggling on the couch and, you know, just saying nice things or like All that write was a little there. note. Yeah, I mean, it, there was moments of it. And you said there was a talk of having a child? What was that? Oh, yeah, so... You know, whenever she'd just start going with whatever she was talking about, she'd be like, okay, we're going to have our daughter, like, Aurora, and or, you know, and I don't know. It's like, it's going to be another fork of my source and branch of me, and and uh, that was a big deal to her. But I didn't want to have another kid, thankfully, or get married or anything until I was rich. And I'm so glad I was so focused on that because it prevented me from doing a lot of stuff. Yeah. And then once these false memories came up of me being an abuser, of course I accused of you being an abuser. Yeah. So she didn't just have you convinced you were abused. She had you convinced you were an abuser. Do you have any real memories of ever abusing anyone? No. Like, Oh, okay. But Thankfully. I mean, like, no, I mean like, like you told us your childhood, yeah, you yeah. kissed someone, right? Yeah, you were yeah. Like, I mean, you were tormented I, over masturbating. Oh yeah, I remember were, getting erections around kids and thinking it was a creep. So I guess that was the closest thing I've had to thinking it was an absolute nightmare. Yeah, and and by the way, you know, there, there's a thing in the psychological world called intrusive thoughts, where really smart, capable, otherwise healthy people have thoughts of killing someone or thoughts of abusing or thoughts of being gay when they're not, or yeah. thoughts of wanting to abuse a kid. They don't actually want to do those things. It's an anxiety condition yep. yeah. where you get the intrusive thoughts. And it's usually you have the thoughts of the things you fear most. So it's mm -hmm. not that you want to do them. Yeah. It's that you really don't that. want to do them. Yeah. But because by not wanting to have the thought that makes you have the thought more. Yeah. And so it, and yeah, so it sounds like you had that. Uh, to, uh, yeah, totally. And then That's if you it. get someone like a Scientologist who's auditing you or someone like Teal Swan, they can play with that to make you think what? Well, yeah. I mean, we had memories. Memory, yeah, recovered we recovered memory. Yeah. I recovered memories of hurting, like hurting, raping and hurting people. Like, and I can see them now as like a visualization and they're not a memory. Like I can see the difference now. But when I was in it, like, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm a nightmare. And uh, so supposedly I reminded her of her abuser and that's sad. Like if that happened, that's horrible. Um, she would, yeah, 
it was always just like more and more stories and more things. And it was just really crazy. So, um, anything else about what you accomplished together before you talk about it unraveling? Um, events and scheduling stuff, the website, um, trying to realize like different beliefs and I don't know the way we're programmed to think things, different triggers and trying to resolve those using her methods, but didn't, some of it helped, I think, I don't know. But what about like growing the movement? Yeah. So she was, uh, trying to get more people. So we created like an online discussion forum where people could come and talk and say things and, uh, stream live streaming things and going to events and trying to do as many interviews as possible. And so that was all big. She wanted to get out there. She wanted to get famous cause she wanted to help reform the world. She's big anti-vaxxer vaccines are really dangerous to her. And I used to think that, and I'm so glad I got my daughter vaccinated, but so you had mentioned earlier kind of her admitting in these quiet moments that she was lying. Can you talk about, talk yeah. about that? Yeah. So like, she's like, everyone's going to know I'm a fraud. Everyone's going to know I'm. Fake. What would lead to her saying that? What would the, what would be the situation? I think being tired and just moments of honesty. It was late at night and just moments of honesty. Like she would say what? I'm afraid everyone's going to know that I'm a fraud, that I'm fake. Well, that could, let's just say that could mean two things. One could mean, I, I know I'm legitimate, but I'm afraid people are going to think I'm a fraud. Yeah. Or it's her saying, I'm a fraud. Uh, I'm, yeah, that's I'm afraid true. I'm going to be found out. It could be either way. Which was it? I I don't know. It wasn't in her mind. But I would assume that she knows that she's fake because she would just lie on top of lies. And when you say anyway. lies, what do you, how do you, how do you distinguish between a lie and like her actually convincing herself? Cause like, this is the big question about Joseph oh, Smith. Gotcha. Did he think he saw an angel? Did oh, he think gotcha. he saw God? Did he think, you know, he was really God's servant on the earth or was it just a total con? I mean, this is the question about Joseph Smith. Was he a conscious fraud or a pious fraud where he actually believed his own stuff or did it really happen? Like those are the three Questions that people ask most Conscious about Joseph fraud, Smith. Pious fraud, or did it really happen? I have no idea. I mean, I the really happened part. I you think, were with her. You were sleeping with her. Like, yeah. You were, I mean, like, which was it in your mind? Well, she would have like secret conversations when I wasn't around with like Blake, and he's the, he's the guy she's been with the longest, and I think he really does love her. Are they still together? You think? I think from the last person I was told that they have their own spouses now or own girlfriends in the communal compound or whatever family that they're doing. And, um, oh, I don't, I don't know, but so what? So you were saying she was having secret conversations. In oh yeah. To- sometimes. And so like maybe they're, I don't know what they were saying or not saying or thinking, but I just, I think one of the things too is how angry she was with people who didn't believe her. And, uh, and just claiming that she went through more than like the Holocaust survivors. and She would say that? Yeah. And that they had nothing on her and all sorts of stuff. I mean, just. So I, that kind of grandiosity again reminds oh, me of yeah. Joseph Smith. Because by his end, he's anointing himself king of the world. He's saying that he's done more for next to Jesus than anyone on earth. Oh, like yeah. he's, you know, really. She's Jesus. Yeah, is she, so is she getting to that point when you're with her where she's basically. Saying suffered more than people in the Holocaust. Yeah, really? yeah, yeah. Okay. So she's just been through it all and knows it all and can say it all with certainty. And then she goes into the bathroom and cuts. So it's like. So yeah. she was self harming. Oh yeah, we'd have her? to go and try and get tools out of her hands. I mean, like. So that's borderline sh- personality disorder behavior, where you use things like self harm and and as a way. Or, or what they call parasuicidality, where you, th- where you threaten to commit suicide or end your life. Exactly. As a way to manipulate people. Uh, Are you saying she did that to you? Yes, I would. Talk about that. Well, because like, yeah, it was, it was more of like a cat and mouse game of trying to, me trying to help her get her, help, you know, stop her from hurting herself. I found a knife under the, bl- under the bed and supposedly she had inserted that. Ah. Uh, makes me feel terrible before we had sex she had shoved it up her vagina one time a knife yeah why 
I think she was trying to get back at me or or me and I, I was like she was on her period I'm like oh my gosh you're bleeding so much are you okay she's and then like, how do you yeah. know if she she's really like, cut herself or if it's a period I'm pretty sure she cut herself because the knife was covered in blood I found it later and I felt something was really wrong because she wasn't enjoying what we were doing and I was really confused and she was like yeah do it like like yeah mm. I just like whatever happened to her whatever's going on with her life I just hope she finds the help she needs like no one should live in like constant fear of people out to get them no one should live in like such turmoil and trauma and I don't I just wish she could find something that would make her life more peaceful and more more joyful I'd recommend CBD oil try that <laughs> it's really helped me with anxiety too so if you're listening Whoever knows her, tell her to try that. I mean, you're kind of making a joke of it, but it, it sounds like you're conflicted between kind of genuinely loving her on some level and feeling really sad that she was so tormented. Oh, yeah. No, I'm not making a joke. I'm, I'm selling to try that. I'm like... But you smiled. I mean, it was... Oh, yeah. Well, because CBD oil is like, you know, whatever. It's like CBD oil. Yeah. I mean, some people are like... I think it's helped me a lot. But, but I mean, like you're, you're getting emotional. You're tearing up. And so you have really conflicted feelings. Oh, yeah. You must I'm love like her. Like, you must. Oh, yeah. I do you love her. Like, oh, hurting. yeah. If I ever saw her again, like, I just wish her the best. Like, I don't. There's just. I mean, I was obsessed with her for several years afterwards. And my whole life was trying to get money to get back to her. And so. So how did. I mean, let's was, talk about the end. How did. How did it end up that you ended up leaving? Well. Oh, sorry. I just want to interject. One oh, of the yeah, things please. that she said a lot was like, you're going to leave me. You're going to leave me. You're going to let me go. And I was like, no, I'm never going to leave you. I'm never going to give up. And she's like, yeah, I can see it now. And she's like, you'll never come back for me and all this stuff. And, and I, would, I was like, no, I'm here too. Or like, you're going to betray or like whatever it is. Or it was always like reaffirming, reaffirming that over and over and over again. So that when I was gone, like that was obsessed with everything that I had reaffirmed. I had created so many like memories or mental affirmations or everything that that was like the most powerful, like important thing was to find a way. So to you help pointed her. to your arm. What, what were you doing? Yeah. There? I will find a way. I will find a way to get back to her, to make her dreams come true. I you, will ta find you tattooed that on your arm. Yeah. What about the other tattoos? So this one's supposed to help me. Show, like, the, show the camera if you can. Not, I, yeah. Okay. You can. Yeah, sorry. Wait, <laughs> let me, I'll switch to my camera. Okay. Now go ahead and show it in that camera. Okay. Uh, so ooh, I can't find it. Okay. All right. Anyways, it's like a weird symbol. It's like a mix of different symbols from the Book of the Dead, the Necronomicon. But she said she had like designed some of them. But anyways, so I put some of them on because supposedly these tattoos and seals were going to help me become a better person or heal or become rich. This one's to become rich. This one's like self-improvement. The one on my chest. Sh show, the, show your shoulder to the camera. That's to become rich? No, this one's to become like myself or something okay and then this i don't know if you can see yeah this. You, yeah just show it yeah. to the camera um this one is richness i put this one afterwards on this is supposed to be to understand other people and this one's supposed to be like peace and then uh yeah i've got one on my stomach that she designed it's kind of cool it looks like a and she designed it yeah and then i went and got the tattoo and yeah apparently I mean, that's commitment right <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, I was going to get her name, like, tattooed across my chest, too. At the time, it was Teal Scott. And it, it wasn't was, Teal Swan? No. Okay. And then she married Sardeep Swan from... Uh, After you? Yeah. Okay. Like, he, she was talking to him while I was... Um, while I was still there, he was starting to talk to him, and then... He was a guru, an Indian kind of... He was... Well, well actually... Well, we, can, we can talk about that in, in a second. Um, he, he was a bodyguard from London, if she met. Anyways... Okay. Yeah. Obviously, when you start talking about tattoos in a religious cult, I think of the Nexium cult. And if you guys have not checked out the the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, CBC podcast, that talks about, you know, it's like eight episodes long of the Nexium cult and how they actually branded these sort of cauterized tattoos oh. onto women in their pelvic region with the initials of the cult leader. Like, it's, it's really, it's a powerful and an intense story about cults. And when you're tattooing yourself with tattoos she designs, it, it reminds me of that. It's different, yeah. but it 
It reminds me. I mean, I wanted to get them because I, she always told me that they would make me better or whatever. And so I did it. Yeah. So what else did you want to say before talking about kind of splitting up? Anything else? Oh, yeah. Just the, affirm, the affirmations that were there. Like, you're going to leave me. I'll never give up on you. Like, you got to be willing to die for this. You got to do, you know, all the sorts of things. Like, repetitive, like, I don't know. It seemed like some type of brainwashing technique, getting someone to profess something over and over again. Was there was there Jesus in any of this? Was there any Christianity in her teachings? No. So there was no end of the world, kind of apocalyptic, end of times kind of stuff? No. Okay. 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 Anything? Just, just that, like, oh, the like, clouds were aliens, and, like, that's a starship. An alien came last night, or this, that, all these, like, weird things. Like, if you didn't see it, or, that's a starship, and that's that. All sorts of crazy stuff. Kind of make it. Kind of sci fi. Yeah, kind of, kind of make it kind of fun, entertaining. A lot of entertainment. Okay. Okay. Um, did she ever write scripture? Like, does she ever write down like things that are followers? Her books, yeah, her, her books. books. They're kind of like that. It's a lot of mystical, just far out there stuff about. Her know, followers would read it. And... Keep going. It's like I, it's like I was doing the BS. I should have done it longer, but yeah, I can do it for hours. Okay, okay. Let's write it down. Okay, so how did things kind of fall apart for you guys? So they were getting bad because like. Oh, sorry. I have to say, I have to say one thing. Forgive me. <laughs> Part of borderline personality disorder is this, I love you, I hate you. It's push you away, pull you close. And that whole thing you said about you're going to leave me, I love you, you're going to leave me, that's all classic borderline personality traits. Yeah, and so she she looked it up and she knew that she had that. Like she would know that these things were going on, but she just didn't think that anything in the medical field could help her even remotely. And, and borderline's hard to treat. I mean, there is a, there is a treatment for it. It's... You know, it's dialectical behavioral therapy DBT by Marshall Linehan, and it it's the best known empirical treatment out there for it. But it's still personality disorders, narcissism, uh, um, you know, uh, personality, you know, uh, disorder. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm rusty on my on my uh, personality disorders, but but um, borderline personality disorder is super hard to treat, and so I could see why she would have not had good experiences because it's just super hard to treat. Yeah. So I was going to say anti, anti-social personality disorder, which some people call psychotic or not having a conscience. That's another oh. classic personality disorder. That's really hard to treat. So yeah. narcissism, I, anti-social personality disorder, borderline, those are all super hard. I, I definitely think she has a conscience and she does feel bad about things because she would talk about the things she felt bad about or worried about, worried about her kid. And, yeah. you know, she's, didn't want to spend any time with him because she said she was abused and she didn't know what to do with a kid. And that's sad. And, uh, so other people would help raise him. He seemed like a good kid. I really enjoyed, I honestly really missed that kid. He was yeah. just a wonderful little, little boy. We spent a lot of time together, hanging out, making up, you know, stories, imagination, playing together. It was fun. And that's tough. Anyone who's ever been in a cult says it's some of the best memories of their life, some of the most happy times, you know, the communal living. It's yeah. just like this. It was like Shangri-La, eating together, loving each other, intimacy, connection, playing, having fun. <laughs> Anyone who is in the Branch Davidian thing or Jonestown or whatever, Nauvoo, you know, but some I'm, of the best of times. Right? Yeah, and I, I can say that now. I actually rent a room for my brother, which has been great. And so when I have my daughter, him and his family, they just like, you know, take us all in and we all hang out as one big family. It's community. And it's, yeah. And it's the best. Yeah, yeah, now yeah. I'm having the absolute best okay, time but of you, my the life. Time you, thought, you thought it was good. Yeah. I thought it was amazing, but yeah, I have to say that's a great way to live. Just yeah. so fun. Yeah. So many fun kids to hang out with and parents, you know, hanging out, playing board games all night and yeah. going to walks and bike rides. Just life is good. So. so you said, and you said this before, people need social interaction. They need friendships. They need relationships. Above right? all else. And we'll do anything to do it. Get there. So that's why when uh, two young men walk, knock on your door and tell you that like, hey, come join us and you're all alone in the world. Hell yeah, you're going to believe in whatever they tell you. We need people. It's so sad that somehow someone said that they, you have to grow up and live and get your own place and be by yourself. It's not healthy. It's not fun. Being alone. Yeah. Living alone is not good. I mean, people living alone, they're on their computers all night and then they just... 
like they're sad and depressed. Like it's very sad. Loneliness is it's deadly. A, yeah, it's, it's deadly. deadly. Yeah. So I can see why you would do anything to do that. I mean, to be a part of anything. Believe anything. Yeah. Follow anyone. Of course. Because any of any cult like experience is preferable to being desperately alone and to be driving yourself crazy alone. Exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah. So we got to see these things as the beautiful things they are. And like, I think you'd asked earlier, why is Blake and Mark still living there? And I'm like, compared to their life before, I think Mark was kicked out of his home and homeless when he was a teenager and living out of his car for most of his life. So I'm like, compared to a lot of other stuff, this might be the best life they've had. And that's great. Like if this is what works for them and that's what they love, like enjoy what you're doing and just be nice to yourself and the people around you. That's all I could say is just, you know, just enjoy it. But yeah. So, so how did it fall apart for you guys? So we kept uncovering more and more memories and we kept getting in more and more fights. Um, so, and then she's like, okay, I want you to list all the things bad that you're doing. And she'd make this huge list of all these things. And she'd blog about everything that's going on in the house. And she'd blog about me, Fallon. And then I made this huge list of like 80 things that I was doing bad. And they were just like the most twisted things I could think of. And they were really bad. And some of them might have been true or aspects of truth. but So back in a shame spiral of yeah, things she, you're doing wrong? Yeah. And so she published that online. And so everyone just hated me. Everyone was like hating me. And some people were like, I'm going to kill you or whatever if you get near her. And... And, uh, so, so she basically communicates to her followers that you're a bad guy. Dangerous, oh yeah. Dangerous that I have antisocial person or the psycho, whatever one yeah. is. Antisocial personality. Yeah. yeah. And no I mean, to some, no yeah. Conscience. And I did have a conscience, but I was still at that point in my life where I feel like I was, you know, the lights were on, nobody was home. I was able to control myself and my emotions so well that like, Yeah. That I wasn't, I don't think I was well. And I still might not be well. I mean, some people look at my face and my emotions like I'm I'm kind of a weird dude. I'm like, just the way I am. But I definitely wish everyone the best, their best life. So she publishes that list. Yeah. And she, we talk about more things about my childhood. But you were still with stuff. her when she's publishing that. Yeah. And it's getting worse. And so we move into separate bedrooms. And so she's starting to look, I think she joins like a millionaire dating site. And she's starting to look for men and things because wealthy, men and wealthy men, men. Me, wealthy men. That's like her thing. Like that's what she needs is someone wealthy. And, and then I think Jim Carrey called the Jim Carrey. Yeah. What? And, yeah. And he wanted to talk to her and get to know her because he had been watching her videos and been really interested in what she had to say. What? Yeah. Because her videos are very, she's very intense. She knows exactly what she means to say. She says it with surety. I mean, like, so she talked to Jim Carrey. Oh yeah. Did they date? No, she wanted to. Fl he wanted to fly her out there so they could start dating and everything. But he, she wanted to bring Blake, her, you know, the safety blanket. And I wonder why she didn't just go boyfriend. alone, like Jim Carrey. It's like and, famous. And he's, he Rich, said, he said, heck no, I don't want any of that drama. Uh. And I don't know where it's happened. But yeah, exactly. So on a website to find rich men, <laughs> and and this is why you're still living with her. Yeah. Did you feel rejected? Did you feel kind of kicked off? Did you feel kind of relieved? Cause it's like, why I'm starting not to have to like watch out for every moment and protect her at all costs from all sorts of everything. You were exhausted. Yeah. I was super exhausted mm. anyways. So, and then one night it like culminated with like me, I was like uncovering memories that I was like sent to kill her and her son. And it's like, <gasps> and I felt horrible, and that's why I left. And uh, you start going crazy when yeah, you yeah. don't know what reality is yeah. and what what memories. They're you're all like, to. "You need to leave," and I'm like, "Yeah, I do." And so they actually let me stay at the other apartment. Everyone like ran away from that apartment, and then like the next day or the day after that, my uh, everyone was like cultural. Or some people have apologized since then afterwards, and like they left, and they're like, "I'm sorry, that was crazy." And I'm just like, "Hey, it's all good, man. Life's good." Honestly, I'm just so grateful to be alive and not to have killed anyone or physically hurt or breaking it, broken any laws that I know of. Just so grateful that I got out of there. Um, so yeah, I went to the psych ward. Okay, wait. So, so, so this, but this is important because you've said several times that even after going to the psych ward, you still believed in her. Oh yeah. So you didn't leave 
not believing in her anymore no. after all you experienced. And she told me to kill myself. Believe- yeah. Wait, say, wait, say, talk, tell that story. Oh yeah. So I was, I was the end and she's like, there's nothing I can do for you. You should just go kill yourself. If I were you, I'd just go kill myself. Some, one of those things. And that was like her thing. Like it's like a throw around thing. It's like, just go kill yourself. I don't know. It seemed like she'd say it a lot to different people or things, but. And and did she at this point was she teaching about the reset button? How suicide's a reset button? Yeah. Can you talk about that teaching? Because you would have experienced it firsthand. Yeah, and just that. Explain it. So, start with we're that. all everything. We're all source. You. What does get, that mean? We're all source. We're all source. It's like just like all up high. Everything's like in it. So we're, we're all, all this. one. Yeah, we're, we're all, all one. one. Yeah, we're she all. She would call it. We're, we're all, all source. Source. Yeah. Okay. And. This is a so, th- kind of a theology. And yeah. so if we're all one, we don't if exist. If you're not having a good time, just push the reset button. Meaning? Kill yourself. And then? You'll get born again. And have another that, life. And so she would just tell people that? Yeah. I mean, yeah. It wasn't always a thing, but. And then what? what I read in the BBC article that we'll put a link to is that she would have people lie down and visualize their own death or visualize really terrible ways that they would die. And the, the psychologists interviewed for the BBC article were basically saying that this is like feeding suicidal thoughts by having them dramatically visualize it and ruminate on, on it. Mm. And, and, maybe, and go, go ahead. Maybe was she trying to do something where like, if you accept the thing you're afraid of or no, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, there is an element of exposure yeah, yeah. where if you lean into your biggest fears, yeah, like, like fear of spiders that. or whatever, but she that, would actively, be, that would have been her defense. Yeah. But she actively told people to kill themselves. Like there's, I, I'm not sure what happened, but I was told by other people that cause she told this person to kill us that they did. And now there's like, they put out something for the FBI supposedly that this person was, but that's just could be BS because I don't really trust Anyone that was in it like I was. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> but there was something around suicide. Yeah. That was always kind of there. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, and her defense in the BBC article was something like, hey, I'm dealing with really extreme people. They're suicidal when they come to me. Yeah. So some are going to commit suicide after they've worked with me. I, I don't take responsibility for that. And I'm trying to get them to not fear it anymore by ruminating on it. And so that that's her defense and that she doesn't want people to commit suicide and that any life, any lost life is, is a tragedy. And, and so, I mean, it, I'm glad she's shifting what she said. Cause she did, did not definitely wasn't that way before, before so, she was, yeah, it was more like open and it's fine to kill yourself kind of thing more. Seemed like she was encouraging it. Yeah. She, for me, there was no help for me. And did you ever see followers do it? Uh, no, I just heard, you know, hearsay. So I don't know. Okay, but you yourself, she told you to kill yourself. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, well, that's okay. I mean, I wasn't going to do it, thankfully. I had made a promise to someone that after I'd done it that I would call them if I ever... Uh, yeah. After you had tried that first time or, or were about to try. Yeah, Derek, uh, yeah. Anyways, that I would call him if I ever got that bad. So I made sure I never got that bad because I didn't want to call him. Not that I don't like the guy. I just don't want to bug him about it. You know, I didn't want to be a burden on anyone. So it's like, I feel like there's, so there's a whole range of emotions, an emotional scale from like sadness and depression to like happiness. And you can be like wishing for death and have a whole nother range of scale. It's like a bizarro world where you can have a happiness and a sadness, but you're just so beyond yourself and who you really are that like, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like a, I don't know. It's just a crazy, crazy place to be in. And that's where I I was in is that place for a long time. And, you know, you know, the church always says, well, David Whitmer and Oliver Cowdery and Martin Harris never denied, you know, what happened. And I just want to reiterate the fact that you left everything falling apart, seeing all these problems in the drama, still believing that she was, had special powers. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. Yeah. It's not until so I... The, so belief is resilient. This, this type yeah. of belief is resilient. It's not until I got exposed, thankfully, to a lot of television movies i watched something called the master which is a great movie about a cult philip seymour hoffman yeah. it's based on scientology basically oh it totally i'm like oh my gosh like so much of the processing and the repetitive things that they do in that 
And like, she tell did. me the truth, tell me the truth, tell me the truth. You know, all these little things. It's like, oh, wait a minute. Was I in a cold? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you didn't know it. At the t- if someone had told you while you were in it, you're in a cold, what would you have said? I'd be like, no, we're saving the world. This is a great group of people. Why are we cold? Look how happy we are. You know what I mean? It's like, that's, that was like the thing. It was so funny. So yeah, there's this rule that no one who's in a cult thinks they're in a cult. <laughs> exactly. And right? if they are, they just deny it. And it's like, if, so what if your group is cultish? Like, it's a group. And if you're enjoying it and you're having a good time, so what? Like, don't, don't think, worry about things so much. Like, just be nice to yourself and like, let yourself, if the rules are a little too tight, let them, let yourself be flexible with it because everyone else is. The people that are most miserable in the LDS church are the ones that are literally trying to do everything like I was. I took it to like the nth degree, like write passages, memorize scriptures, like go to the temple every day. I was told if you went to the temple, you'd become a better person. I went like every day. Like I was insane about it. So just Yeah. yeah and I think the whole point is like the savior, he makes it better. And a story, have a good time. Like, don't like let yourself be whatever God made you to be and enjoy your life. And the, the happiest Mormons I talk to are always talking about the things they want and the things they want to do. Like, well, I want to do this and I want to go here. And I want to do this. Hey, let's get this together and do this. Like, none of them are like actively talking about how they need to be building up the kingdom 24 seven all the time because they know that they're a child of God. So whatever they want to do must be of God. Like they get the little, the little things, the nuances that I just couldn't get. I was trying to beat the natural man out of me and make myself a shell of a person so that God could come through me and control me and let me live my life. And it was a nightmare. I was a nightmare. And I just feel that so grateful that I know that now. I mean, if I wanted to, I could go back to the church and join it and have a great time because of the fact that I know I get it. Savior makes it better. Have a good time. Like that's it. So you're basically saying whatever you're a part of, just kind of relax and yeah. don't take it too seriously and just enjoy yeah. your life. And it's almost like it's the salt to the meal, not the meal itself. Don't look at your religion as the meal. Look at it as the salt, the, yeah. the savor that makes the meal better. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. And I think like the question is this, if whatever you're in wasn't true, would you still do it? And if the answer is yes, then that's the right thing for you to be doing. If the answer is no, then like, yeah, maybe don't, Find out, you know, try to make it happier. I don't know, because it doesn't matter whether something is absolutely true or not, is if if it benefits you in your life. That's the best part. And the details of it all, like, don't look, I guess. I don't know what else to say, because yeah. we'll come back to that.